guys, this is Gab from Enfield Rider. Hope you guys are having an amazing time out there. Just want to start this video by saying a big thank you for all you guys who have been supporting me immensely. I have crossed 500 subscribers and it's one of the most happiest feelings ever in my life. And all the credit goes to you guys who have been supporting me so well. Thank you guys and have a great day. Hope you guys like the video. In today's video, I will be sharing with you guys six main points that I do actually take care of while maintaining my motorcycle. Now, the first point that I want to share with you guys is actually how I ride my motorcycle. Now, most of you guys might be unaware of the fact that the way the bullet's engine is designed is much different compared to the rest of the vehicles that are available in the market. Now, my point is that each and every person who actually owns a bullet might have a different way of riding style. Now for an instance, let's take two persons having different riding style. Now the first person's riding style considered it to be linear. Linear in the sense that his gear to speed ratio is constant at each and every gear. Now if he follows this method, his speed to time graph will look somewhat like this. Here we can see that there is very little amount of variations of speed the engine needs to output. Now the second person, the second person has much an aggressive way of riding. Here, much aggressive in the sense means that his gear to, uh, his gear to speed ratio is not at all constant. Now if he follows this, his speed to time graph will look somewhat like this. Here we can see that there is a lot of amount of variations of speed the engine needs to output. Now, the bullet's engine is mainly designed to accept the first criteria. Now, the second person who actually owns the bullet, his engine will have to a lot of variations of speed at uneven intervals of time. This can actually lead to the production of tapping noise. So, I would highly recommend you guys to ride your vehicle in a linear way. That is, keep a constant speed at each and every gear. Now, this is what I follow, 0 to 10 kilometers in the first gear, 10 to 20 in the second gear, 20 to around 35 in the third gear, 35 to around 55 in the fourth gear, and 55 to a max of 80 kilometers in the fifth gear. Now, 80 I would say is the sweet spot where you guys actually get the most amount of smoothness and the least amount of vibrations. So. This is the first point that I want to share with you guys. Now the second point that I want to share with you guys is actually related to the chain and sprocket of your bullet. Three days back I had uploaded a video related to how you guys can properly clean and service your chain and sprocket. So if you guys haven't watched the video yet, I will leave a link in the description below. You guys can watch it out. So cleaning and lubing your chain is an important factor that you guys should follow while you maintain your motorcycle. If you guys don't tighten your chain or lobe your chain, this can actually lead to the uh, sprocket teeth getting damaged. And once the sprocket teeth get damaged, it can in turn affect the uh, chain, getting and the chain will rather get damaged. So I would highly recommend you guys to properly service and clean your chain regularly. So that's the second point that I actually do take care while maintaining my motorcycle. Now the third point that I want to share with you guys is actually how I deal with vibrations that come from the bullet. Now if you guys take into consideration the bullet 500, the classic 500, bullet 350, classic 350, the Electra, everything has one thing in common that is vibrations and people have just accepted the fact that yes bullets do vibrate. And for, for uh, instance, I too have to accept the fact that bullets do vibrate. But what is the key factor that makes this vibration show out much more than other vehicles? 
Yeah, I would say that Buddha is the only vehicle that have more than 80 to 90 percent of its whole body made up of metal. And you guys know that metal is an extreme conductor of vibrations. That's the reason why when the vibrations come off an engine, it's equally distributed to the every section of the bullet. Now, my point is that every part of the bullet is being tightened with screws. And if you guys can take a look here, the screws that are present on the silencer and the point guard and all, they have been tightened without the use of a rubber, rubber bush. Now the problem is, when we guys travel at the speed of more than 70 to 80 kilometers, there is a constant amount of vibrations that is uh, being delivered to all the parts of the bullet. And screws are not tightened with rubber bushes, they do actually loosen up. And we guys, after, uh, as time passes by, we guys come, to, come out and say, Oh, my bullet is making having a lot of unknown sounds. What is this? Actually, the sound is being produced from these parts getting loose. So I highly recommend you guys to tighten the screws kind of periodically, once in a while. I don't do that because I don't like sounds, getting unknown sounds coming from the engine. So that's the third point that I want to share with you guys. Now the fourth point that I want to share with you guys is actually related to the battery of the bullet. Now, I have seen a lot of people who actually on their headlights or park lights when the engine is off. Now, let's just try it here. When I try to on the headlight or the park light, we can see that the battery or the ampere meter is getting deflected to the negative side. This actually shows that the battery is discharging power when there is no charging taking place. Now, what happens when you frequently do this? When we rather frequently do this, there is more discharging taking place rather than charging. And this drastically affects the battery life of your battery. So I would highly suggest you guys not to on the headlight or park light when the engine is on. This is the fourth point that I actually take care of while maintaining my point. Another point that I want to add with how you guys maintain the battery is this battery actually is a serviceable battery. A serviceable battery means as time passes by the electrolyte level in the battery reduces and we have to manually top up the electrolyte level using distilled water. So make sure you guys have a check at least once in six months whether the electrolyte levels in your battery is low and if it's so low do top up it using distilled water. The fifth point that I want to share with you guys is actually related to the air pressure in your tires. It is very much important that you guys follow recommended measures of air in both at the front and the rear tire while you ride. Now the recommended measures are 22 psi at the front and 32 to 34 psi at the rear. It is also mandatory that you guys don't go higher than this measure and lower than this measure. If you go lower than this measure, it could actually lead to the uh, much more surface area of your tire getting contact with the road. And this can easily lead to your tire getting worn out much more faster. Another problem is actually when you guys have low pressure and you guys all know that bullet 500, it's not a tubeless tire. And this can lead to much more puncturing happening. And if you go much higher than the recommended pressure, this actually, when you guys go in highways on long rides and all, the, as, you, as the speed of your vehicle increases, as the pressure of the tire is more, 
the contact between the road and your tire actually reduces. And if there is a situation where you guys have to brake, this can lead to the tire getting locked much more faster. So I highly recommend you guys to have the recommended measures of 22 PSI and 32 to 34 PSI both at the front and rear of your tires. So that's the fifth point that I care while maintaining my motorcycle. Now the sixth and final point that I want to share with you guys is actually related to the engine oil I use in my bullet. Now you might be a person who actually only gives your vehicle in an authorized service center. <clears throat> now there they do actually use an oil called liquid gun. It's a mineral oil. But the problem with that oil is it can't withstand a wide variation of heat. Now you might be a person who actually lives in a city and has to deal with a lot of traffic. Or you might be a person who actually loves to tour a lot. For me, I live in a city, I have to deal with a lot of traffic and I love to tour. So it was a hell lot of a situation for me. So I thought of changing into another brand of oil. So after a lot of researching, I found out that Motul, the synthetic one, is an amazing alternative for the liquid gun. So I changed to it and it's been around uh, 5,000 kilometers since I changed the oil and openly speaking it's been an amazing experience. The heat dissipation has been reduced much much low and there is very little heat that is dissipated. <coughs> and the vehicle in total has been much more smoother, the vibrations have reduced. So I would highly suggest you guys to take a look at this oil. If it uh, suits your situation. I will highly suggest you to move towards the motivus it's same synthetic one. So that's the sixth point that I do take care of while maintaining it. So these are the six points that I wanted you guys to know. Just making sure that this video is not limited to six points. I want you guys to comment below that what are your tips that you guys follow while maintaining your bullet. Hope you guys like the video. If you do so, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you feel that I am providing informative videos for you guys, please do hit the subscribe button too. Until next time, this is your boy Gavin signing out. You guys have a great day. Peace out.